some specifics. Um, not surprised that we both mentioned growth as far as priority. As you know, we've had a call for questions, try to get input from the community, uh, asking them what, what kind of issues they want to hear you guys talk about. The one overriding thing that came up over and over is growth and how do we manage it. Uh, 315 project looks like it's going to go forward. Uh, you both touched on the Callaway building and the, the Trinity Triangle development. <clears throat> We've heard a lot of folks talk about what the role of the government should be in that. What, how strictly should Decatur control it? Um, some folks have said it should be laissez-faire, hands off, let the, let the market take it where it's going to go. Other folks obviously want to see a lot more stringent regulation uh, with more of a thought to future planning. Uh, you both touched on what your approach might be, but the simple question to you is what do you think the role of the city is and what, what kind of changes would, would you like to see implemented going forward with these developments? We'll go with that break first. Um, I feel like um, that the role of the city is extremely important. I think this, this city should be a leader in making sure that these developments are what Decatur is happy and comfortable with and what is the best for Decatur in the long term. I feel like that, um, that Decatur has arrived. We are at a point in our development here where we can <coughs> dictate more than in the past what we as a community would like to see. And um, I feel like it's very important to a lot of us, that's the reason a lot of us are here today, is because we care. And we would really like to see development in, say, if you're just referring to commercial development, we'd like to see development that reflects the character of the city. And, you know, I hate to just keep coming back to this green building ordinance thing, but I feel like as far as the um, commercial development in the city, if we can have a good ordinance related to that, I think a lot of things will follow. I was at the 315 Ponds meeting, and 50% of the issues that people were bringing up were things that could be directly addressed beforehand by that. Um, they were saying things like, hey, are the lights going to be shining out of the building into my property? Are the air conditioners going to be too loud? Are we going to be able to protect the Don Redwoods? Are we going to have bicycle racks? What's the green space going to be like in there? So if we had something kind of in place like that, I feel like that we would be able to start the conversation at a whole different level. And I also feel like that a, a good ordinance like that is separates the wheat from the chaff with the developer. The developer, you get a higher quality developer, and you also get a developer that is more conscious of the community and more interested in the community and what it really wants in as far as that. So, Scott? Well, I mean, I think I think as you see right now, you, the, the city plays a, a big role in when developers come into the, come into the cater and start looking at it. Uh, the city uh, is not always perfect in the in the ordinances and the things that we have. That's why we we review them every once in a while. We make changes to them, we adopt new things, the world changes, and we, we're not a perfect system. Uh, so I think the city maintains uh, the staff, I think, does a very good job with, uh, with trying to um, relate to the developers what we want to see here. Um, but I think it's an evolving process. Uh, I think we learned a lot. I was at the, at the 315 meeting, and um, you know, a huge issue, or not a huge issue, but, but something that was left out is some of the residents in an adjoining commercial building were not thought of to be at the table as the as the property owners uh, the individual residences around the, around the building and those <coughs> that group of people had a great insight on what the building because they live in a downtown development they had great insight and great ideas on what that, that developer could do a little bit better and they also had a lot of concerns so I think there's there's things we're always going to see that could be done better and I think that's you know indicator that's what we do we do a great job of we balance we want to have developers come in. We need that economic development, but we want to be able to control it and we want to be able to balance it. We don't want to make our rules so stringent that no one comes in here and we're too hard to work with and it's just there's, there's no development that's going to go on. That's not going to help us in the long run. Um, what we need to do is strike a balance where the community gets what they want, the city can get what they want, the developer can make a project happen. Um, and so I think that's where the role of the city is. It's an evolving process. Um, it has changed dramatically over the last 20 years, I think. Um, there's a lot of things that developers did 20 years ago they would never get away with now, and that's good. Uh, when we have those developments come in, I think, you know, based on the stormwater issue we have in the cater, the developers have to come in and do a, a huge job on the stormwater retention on their property. That's a great thing. Uh, I think we can get some, 
some more eco-friendly developments in, in the, or at least those ideas and initiatives over to them. Um, but I think it's an evolving process and I think we just have to watch it and, and interject those comments and start early in the dialogue. The best thing I could tell anyone coming into Cato, whether you're doing something in your house or you're doing something downtown, go talk to your neighbors before <coughs> you start planning it. Get ideas from them. Engage them in conversations. The best ideas come from your neighbors. So go talk to them early. I think that's one thing we can do a better job of is talking with the people earlier than later. All right, thank you very much. Um, this next question, we'll start with you, Scott. And it appears a bit from the strategic plan principles, but it really overguides those principles. Mm -hmm. And it's it's uh, based on some of the feedback, again, as Jeff was saying, from, from the online questions that were submitted. Um, we know that the city is run on a day-to-day -day basis by professionals, the city manager and her staff. And so the question is, what do you perceive the role of the city commission um, in operating the city. It, we, we have staff, uh, you know, city halls full of very competent people that, that run the city on a day-to-day -day basis. Where does the commission fit in um, in that process, in your minds? And um, kind of an ancillary question to that, um, can you point to a specific action that the committee um, undertook that you would have opposed? Or if not, um, is there something that the city commission has done recently um, that you think really kind of highlights the the role that you see the commission playing. So, is there is there anything specifically that has happened uh, recently that you can give us an example of how you feel the commission um, asserts itself in Decatur? Well, I mean, I think in essence, you know, you're you're right. The, the staff or, or a city manager run government. Uh, the staff is, is for the day to day operations. The city manager. Uh, the, the the role of the commission, in my eyes, is is, is to make sure that the the laws and, and, and sort of governing governing issues of the city are addressed and maintained and changed if they need to be. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the commission represents you in the audience, uh, the, the commissioners. I mean, we're we're what we're what the voice of Decatur should be talking to and telling us the issues and having that open dialogue. And we can bring those to the staff. And we can bring those to the table and understand what what uh, what you know what we need to do in Decatur. Um, so I think the role of the commissioner uh, or role of the commission, uh, very much like you know maybe a board of directors or or a group of elders at a church, um, it's 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 to try to take a strategic approach and to look at things. You have a staff over here maintaining the day-to-day -day operations, doing a great job on that. We're coming up with different with different ways of dealing with problems or different issues that are coming up. So in that case, that's sort of how I see the role of the commission. Uh, that's certainly how we've worked with them. I've worked with them over the past. Um, to your second part of the question, um, you know, I mean, we'll take, you know, annexation, I think. Um, you know, regardless on, 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 what, uh, on what the outcome or what your stance is on, on annexation, um, you know, I did like to see how the school board and the commission worked on that issue. Um, you know, they... The, the commission sits here, they understand certain things, the school board sits over here, they're experts on certain things. But when an issue like annexation comes up that, that affects a lot of different areas of our, of our city, um, you know, they, they both raised their hand and said, we gotta get together. We need your expertise to tell us what the impacts on the school are, and we, we'll, we'll be the experts maybe on the financial impacts on the city and the, the resources and the, and the different things that we're, we're gonna be impacted on. So regardless of the outcome of that, I felt like the, um, Seeing those two work together uh, was very was exactly what we want out of a out of a you know a dual when you have two different groups running two different parts of the city. I thought that was very good. Greg, yes, I, I feel like the the role of the commission um, they have two roles, and Scott kind of touched on one and alluded to another one. Um, basically, they're they're there for to represent you on an everyday basis. Um, Fred Boykin, I email him all the time about issues. He emails me back. Um, there's, you know, a pothole in your street or things like that. You know, you need to have that kind of be able to feel that comfort level with the commission where you can contact them and someone you know and someone in your neighborhood. And you feel very comfortable with that. And um, I feel like, secondly, I feel like that they should provide the vision for the city. They need to be looking down the road 10, 20 years. Um, this is a community that's been here a long time, that's going to be here a long time in the future. And the commission needs to have a long-term vision of what they want to 
like to see the city look like in the future. They need to prioritize the strategic plan. And that's one of the issues I have with the strategic plan. If you go, and I've looked at it many times because on the sustainability board, we have a lot because that's kind of what our sustainability plan came out of. And um, it doesn't have any prioritization in it. And it's really up to the leaders <coughs> to establish those priorities and kind of as, a, as an ongoing basis and make sure that the city is going in the direction that everybody would like it to go. And um, as far as things that I was not happy about with the, the commission kind of, you know, proposing, it was actually kind of an interesting one that I bring up because it kind of was a very, it was a very not Decatur kind of thing. It's, it's kind of a little small thing, but um, the city commission passed a skateboard ordinance for the square of the, the, so that kids can't skateboard on the square anymore. And I thought, you know, I, that's just not very Decatur. That's just, Decatur's not about that. Decatur is more about community. And I love when I go up in the square and I see a bunch of kids up there playing, having fun, and I, I want them to be up there. I want to see you know, the entire community using that as a gathering space and coming up there and feeling comfortable there and making connections with their friends and building community. And I feel like that that kind of, it really just kind of got me where I thought that was not really Decatur. <coughs> as a city 